Sinds 20 jaar woont hij weer in Engeland, in het kustplaatsje Whitstable. De eerste 50 jaar na de oorlog was New York in Amerika zijn woonplaats. Zelden sprak hij over zijn ervaringen als gliderpilot in 1944 tijdens operatie Market Garden. Ook niet nadat hij weer terug was in zijn geboorteland. Hallo Phil. Hi. Yes, please. Hello, Mr. Colpip. Hi there. How very nice to meet you. Well, yes, my God. Uh, yes. Or not. Meet you my. Remember, this, this is my, uh, my God here. My dick protects me. Peter Colthup is aan zijn bed gekluisterd omdat hij twee slechte benen heeft. Eén door een oude oorlogswond en de andere omdat hij versleet is. Hij leest veel en hoewel hij nu steeds vaker over de oorlog praat, heeft hij in zijn lange leven nooit behoefte gehad aan reunies of herdenkingen. You got to get on with life. It's like you live for the day. You live for today. That's it. You know, like my, my Japanese maitre d' used to say. You live for the day. You get up in the morning. You know, you're going to have a good breakfast, a nice breakfast. You know, that's the day. Yesterday's gone. <laughs> and that's what we've got to learn to do. We've got to learn to do, and we've got to learn peacefully for the day. <laughs> So that everybody's saying, oh, you used to be a glider pilot, mm. uh, we're glad to... It doesn't mean a lot to you. No, it doesn't mean anything. You have to learn from it. I just learned from it. Uh, yeah. That's life. He doesn't seem very proud of it. It's his, his style. He doesn't see, as you've spoken to him, he doesn't see it as he's done anything particularly special. It was something that they all did. They were that age. They wanted to help, you know. Yes. So subsequently, if you ask him, you know, did he feel proud about helping other people? Of course he is, but he doesn't see it as being brave or, you know, romantic or any of those things. He just sees it, it was something they were asked to do and they were happy to do it. Dirty underwear, brown underwear time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you remember that one or weren't you there? <laughs> there was brown underwear time. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it wasn't being noble. He was trying to kill you and the only thing you held your hand was to kill him first. I mean, yeah. that's not nobility, yeah. that's being scared. Na de oorlog was het slecht gesteld met Engeland. Steden lagen in puin door bombardementen en ook economisch was het land er niet best aan toe. Jonge mannen kregen het advies hun heil elders te zoeken. They got an issue called Well Well Shall John Go. And that was right after the war because so many people were leaving. Leaving him because we got, you know, what a disaster. Because, like the building things, you couldn't get material to build. You couldn't get, even because they was all only on special reasons to get you have material and that. And it was very difficult, wasn't it? You had a, a terrible time after, after the war. And it said, Where shall John go? And it talked about Australia and Canada and all the different places you could go, you know. And they, and, 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 and uh, America, and it said, On oh, America, there's no damage. All the factories are roaring away, producing massive armaments. And now they've switched to private things, you know. So, you know, it's a very prosperous. And Because I thought, you know, my God, I'm, 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 under, I'm a little lower class boy. I've got no training. What a job I'll be able to get in England, you know. And then uh, they had, you know, the, the musicals come over from America. Oh, what a glorious morning. Oh, what a glorious day. I thought, oh, that's the country for me. Yeah, that must be great over there. <laughs> I went to America. There's a place captivates and enthralls me. So then I thought, well, maybe I could start a restaurant. Well, let me try it, you know. I, I, well, let me try it. So it was in the basement. I had eight tables, eight tables in a restaurant, in the basement. <laughs> and I just went in there and started up. For how long did you have the restaurant? Oh, for 40 years, from 1953 to 19, uh, 2000. Yeah, 40, 40 43 years. Huh? Hmm. Een succesvol restaurant, met gasten als first lady Jackie Kennedy. Als hij in 2000 stopt met werken, keert hij terug naar Engeland. De oorlog is dan nog altijd op de achtergrond. Maar nu, nu hij in bed ligt, kijkt hij bijvoorbeeld terug op zijn tijd in het Essex Regiment. Als 17-jarige jongen volgt hij in 1940 mee in de Battle of Britain. They didn't have enough anti-aircraft guns, so they got a First World War French machine guns, they were quite weighty things, dig a trench, sit down there, and when they come over, because they came in very low, blaze away like crazy. And that's what we did. So I, I, and I said, well, the hell, I'll, I'll nip back and get some you know, cartridges. So I got out, because I dropped a, one of the scattering bombs landed up. <laughs> I got a shrapnel in my thigh. 
and all I got was a sergeant said, the bloody fool, what do you hear you doing out of the trench? <laughs> I don't get a medal, no, you idiot. <laughs> So you see, so courage is not is not all bravery; it's often stupidity. <laughs> I learned that lesson. <laughs> Als in 1942 in Engeland het Glider Pilot Regiment wordt opgericht, meldt de jonge Peter Colthup zich onmiddellijk aan en begint aan een pilotenopleiding, een heel algemene opleiding. It's always the same. You had you got, you had lectures. You're given given a magazine, and you read all about the theory of it all is, and you're li- giving the lectures, and then you have the stationary one. You know that you sit down and you do landing things like that, and then you go into tiger moths with a trainer, yeah. and then one you you know circuits and bumps. Oh right. Circuits and bumps. You, you take off. You go in, and then in the end he said, "Okay, don't take off. But you're, I think you're okay. You can do it by yourself, you know." And then you thought, "Oh my goodness, me! Somebody, me, <laughs> you had to t- take off, and you do it yourself." Oh, you say up there, "Oh, you, you, you were so excited about flying by yourself." You yeah, know? but of every sort. But, of training, e- but yeah. everyone does the same way. If you ended up in a form of a, a huge bomber, or whether it was a glider, it was all the same training. I never knew that. Tijdens een pilotenopleiding wordt hij als aankomend zweefvlieger regelmatig voor gek versleten. And they go to land to another airport in a bomber place. We go up and have lunch there and then fly back again. And they said, what are you doing? They said, we're going to be in the gliders. And they what? You are, you're crash landing every landing? What? What? That's crazy. <laughs> As the bomber pilot said, you're, you're an idiot. <laughs> every landing is a crash. You've got no engine. <laughs> well, we never thought of that. Het vliegen en de voorbereiding op de gevechten die met zekerheid zouden volgen, vergde veel van de piloten. En af en toe moest er dan ook stoom afgeblazen worden in het café. Tot en met de laatste ronde. Last call, last call. Oké, okay, we're all Oké, okay. we're just good time glider pilots. Shy talk really is her name. We drink by day, we fuck by night. We're just awful dirty shites. Fuck you, I'm on the road to fame. <laughs> Na zijn opleiding begint het echte werk. Op 19 september 1944 vliegt hij in een zweefvliegtuig richting Wolfhezen als onderdeel van operatie Market Garden. When you're going there and you see another glider turning over and crashing down, you think, oh my god, that's awful. But no, we, we, it was all right. I landed. There was. Uh, but except for the, we were under fire as soon as we landed, we were under fire. And there was some, some mortar fire too. But then someone else, poor devil, landed, come between us and the machine gun that was in hiding in the woods, was firing on us, be right between us. So it stopped. The, the, uh, so that the, protected you and protected and, me. And, that, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter is meer piloot dan soldaat. Onderweg moet hij vechten voor zijn leven, terwijl hij daar niet voor opgeleid was. Well, no, 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 The other day I either read it or I read it, and he said, "Oh yes, we." Were, oh, I think I read it somewhere, and he said, "Oh, we were highly trained, just like the commandos. We were very, very highly trained, you know. It was, mom. but it it wasn't so. We were just pilots, you know. We, when you landed, you joined the people you were with, and then they took over. You were just a staff sergeant, and they had an officer, and then so they took over, and then you did what what they wanted you." Uh, and then we were we were trapped in the buildings, and and we had to keep retreating and running out. And in one, we uh, I was in um, uh, I was on, on the bed, and 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 the guy I was with was on the uh, on wardrobe. And then you heard a tank coming along. We thought, oh my God! If they once once they knew you were on the second floor, they put a put a shell through there, and and then you were a goner. Mm-hmm. So you had to keep quiet, you know, for God's sake. And uh, uh, and then we heard people coming up the stairs. And then uh, we thought, oh, God, what, what are they? So we had to wait, but the door, it was a German, and I just fired immediately. And then we had to run. I had to step over him. All right, yeah. And it was my age. That's... You know, a nice-looking young man, my age, you know. He's been back for 20 years now in the UK. Did he, did he used to speak to you about it? No. This is something that never got mentioned before. Um, very similar as of my own father, who was in the desert with um, Montgomery and he went through to Italy. Something that didn't get spoken about until he's very later in life. I mean, probably only a year or two before my father passed away, he actually opened up and spoke about some of it. He was a tank driver. 
De brug bij Arnhem haalt hij uiteindelijk niet en de geallieerden moeten zich via de Rijn bij Oosterbeek terugtrekken. How did you get out of that situation? In the end. Well, they were in finally in the end. Uh, um, it, it got so bad that they said that we are we going retreating. They they the Paris dropped. The the uh, Polish Paris dropped. You know, and by God, they were the other side of the river. But they managed to get boats and get across. And boy, they were they were tough. They wanted to get into a German and kill them. You know, said, no, 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 no. Boy, they, you know, they made us look like idiots. They were, no, 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 no. They were, they were, God, they were, they were brilliant. They were tough, I tell you. The glider pilots formed a chain from, from the, from the, there was a big, bigger uh, hotel there. There was head, they kind of headquarters. And then we formed a chain right down to the bank, the river bank. And then at the end, they said, okay, it's your turn. But then you were there. And the um, the tide, the, the the current was very strong in the in the Rhine because we didn't know anything about that. So we said we we keep our boots on. No, we we throw our boots away. We're swimming. So then we were the, the only ones left. So we started swimming. But then of course the current takes you out. We didn't know that. We well, there's the English side. But my God, there's the Germans. Way <laughs> but full a boat came along and they <laughs> they grabbed me <laughs> and they took me across. And then my feet touched the ground and I was on firm land. Het duurt nog tot mei in het volgende jaar dat de oorlog voorbij is. Maar dan mag Pieter naar huis. Hoewel zijn geheugen nog prima is, is de thuisreis altijd een beetje een zwart gat geweest. You know I can never remember whether we flew back or or, or went by boat coming from I can't remember. I suppose your mind gets shocked. You don't I suppose it must be something like that. And so as I said, call up from Ashford. Said, oh, I'm, I'm coming home on the 3:30. Okay, fine. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So arrive home, and on the front, of the front of the taxi was a Union Jack. And I said, oh, someone coming in, one voting something. Yeah, there's some politicians here, I suppose. But he said, no, no, no. He said, that's for you. And I said, what? And I arrived at the, at the home, and there was Mum and Dad outside, and about 30 other people all clapping. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so they celebrated so the homecoming. So I had a home welcome, yes. Operatie Market Garden was voor Pieter afgelopen. De operatie die na de oorlog een mislukking werd genoemd. Oh, no, of course. It was very badly planned, that's all. It was just, it was a great idea, but it, they should have gone into it, they should, they asked the wrong people. They, you know, because, oh, Mark Gobley was all, you know, oh, oh, oh. Me or another medal? Oh, another medal! Oh yeah, fire! Oh yeah, charge! <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, that's what he was like, you know. And it's not like Patton. Patton was like that too, but he he got it done. <laughs> You've got to remember the war because the the people that have all suffered are the people that are dead. And when you're like, you've got to remember it, but not war. Cut out war. Yeah. Don't yeah. have war. Well, have memorials, but don't bra- no, not brave noble people. They were all shitting themselves with fright. <laughs> Nothing noble about that. <laughs> and rightfully so. You had so, no yeah. choice. You had to get to. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't me. Oh, I'm going to be brave today. Oh, I'm a Roman emperor. Like I got the. Oh, you got it. The the red, white, and blue. The the flag. The British Empire. You got it over there, huh? Mm. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's my toilet facilities. <laughs> see? see, see. <laughs> But I still got the red, white and blue. <laughs> Na thuiskomst vertrekt hij al snel naar Amerika. En Nederland heeft hij sinds die tijd, inmiddels ruim 77 jaar geleden, nooit meer bezocht. Wat hij heeft overgehouden aan zijn legertijd is een gruwelijke afkeer van oorlog en geweld en van de mensen die daar verantwoordelijk voor zijn. When I look at Andre Rieu, and then I look at Hitler, you see Hitler. Go, 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 go,